fight for one like me who's been fighting all the time and who wants to have a fight. So there it is then, the, the music entrance for Nigel Benn. He loves this part of it, of course. A little bit of show business in him anyway. So there it is, holder of the Commonwealth Championship with the Commonwealth Trophy and the promoter, Frank Maloney, there heading them. And there he is, all in the sequin out for two. What a sharp dress that is for Nigel Benn. He's beginning to like the Royal Albert Hall for his stagey performances. So they'll have plenty of chance now to uh, stare each other out while the gloves are being put on and they're the protective bandages which are restricted and uh, boxing board inspectors have to look at those. Well, a little bit of fashion on show there, Jim, isn't it? Yeah, well, everything in black, the, the dark destroyer, it looks uh, as though he means business as usual, doesn't it? for Nigel Benn to defend his title for the third time from the Royal Albert Hall in London, this time taking on Michael Chilambi from Zambia. The Zambian champion notching up 14 wins with only a single defeat. Benn now with 20 wins under his belt and most of them not going past the second round. The commentators, Jim Watt and Reg Gutteridge. Contest of 12 three-minute rounds to decide the middleweight championship of the Commonwealth. In the blue corner, from Zambia, with a record of 15 fights, 14 wins, 13 inside the distance, the middleweight champion of Central Africa, the challenger, Mike Chilambi. Well, first looks is a bit of a string bean looking uh, middleweight for the first visit here, Chilambi. In the red corner, with a record of 20 fights, 20 wins, all by KO, the middleweight champion of the Commonwealth and people's champion, the Dark Destroyer, Nigel He's a bit like Ali in the sense that he feeds off the crowd, doesn't he, Nigel Ben? Loves it. And that uh, really drives him on there with the... Uh, Dad and son in the corner, Brian and Sean Lynch. The win at one o'clock today, Chilambi scaled 11 stone, 4 and a quarter pounds. Ben, 11 stone, 6 pounds. Your officials appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control, the timekeeper, Mr Ray Rice of Morden, the referee, Mr Dave Pallis of Edmonton. A little bit of drama actually at the weigh-in ceremony, Ben getting there a bit late, having treatment on a, an ankle that he'd injured apparently, and uh, they threatened to strip him of the championship, but he only just made it in time, and in fact the weight at 11.6 is right on the title limit. So a bit of height advantage to Lambi, the Zambian lion, and I think he's going to need all the help he can get there, he needs a bit of reach and uh, may have to run a bit, we'll soon find out. Now is this going to be another quick one or not for Nigel Ben? Had 10 wins in the first round. And he really is a, a string bean looking middleweight this gym, isn't he? Before a punch has landed. Yeah, well, he doesn't look to have a tight defence, so I don't know if he's looking uh, for his feet to keep him out of trouble, but uh, I would much rather have a, a tight defence if I was facing Nigel Ben. Sanctioned by the Commonwealth Committee of the Boxing Border Controllers. A challenger, his only defeat is against his trainer, Enoch Chama. Uh, he's not working in the corner with him tonight, apparently. Well, that's the longest Ben's ever gone without throwing a punch, I suspect. Oh, and there it is, one hit, and the first one he threw 
it just simply polex that line, and he's not going to get up, but if he does, I would think Paris would stop it. We make that a 60-second one. He's already had a 16 seconds. He's had a 25 or 57 seconds, and he's done it again, Nigel Ben. 60 seconds with the, the first and only punch he really landed in the contest. Now, whether this fellow deserved the crack or not, we won't know, because Ben is liable to hit any fighter on the chin like that, and they can go, Jim. Yeah, it was a nice clean punch. It wasn't uh, one of Ben's uh, best punches, I wouldn't say, but it was certainly enough to finish the job tonight. Bang on the chin. The first punch, Ben throws, and uh, the fight's all over. Uh, Chalami didn't look to have anything that was uh, about to trouble Ben. He was backpedalling all the way through with what looked to me like a loose defence, and the first meaningful punch, Ben threw, it's all over. And he gets a little hug there from promoter Frank Maloney. And there it is in the replay. We've got it twice coming up, Jim, but only one punch mattered. And there it is, right on the button. And there he just completely folded up, and you could almost shout timber there as he came over. Yeah, well, the punch was bang on the chin. As I say, not one of Nigel Ben's best punches, but still 80% uh, power is still enough to put anybody in trouble. After one minute, seven seconds of the first round, Tulambi fails to beat the count. The winner and undefeated Commonwealth middleweight champion, Nigel Ben. 67 seconds. Nigel, quicker than expected. Well, it was, um, I didn't want to rush in. I wanted to see what he was going to do to me. First of all, I wanted to throw a couple of shots, see what he's got. Well, you know, I didn't want to wait around because he jabbed me, but he didn't really feel anything. And I thought, well, you know, let's get rid of him. You know, not, not, no disrespect to Chalambi, but, you know, I was, I'm looking to fight Michael Watson. That is a guy I'm after. If there's one opponent you really want, then, apart from the Grahams, apart from the Watson, you, it, he's the top of your hit list, is he, Michael Watson? Michael Watson's definitely the top of my hit list because um, everybody's been saying, like, you know, when are you fighting Watson? In, come April, we, we should get it on me and Watson. Well, let's have a look at the fight. I hope we can see it on our monitor down here and see how things ended. And you, you just give us a, your running commentary. You're not bad at that. Well, thanks a lot, Jim. I took me time. I weren't, I weren't going to waste any shots. And, you know, and it caught him flush on. And um, I wasn't rushing. I was just taking my time and seeing what he had to offer. And then when I caught him with a shot, I knew he was out. But I just uh -huh. wish it was a bit more stiff opposition, to the truth. We've got it from another angle. And, and your trainer, Brian Lynch, is with us. Yeah, we worked on the shots and uh, they come off. <laughs> That's all we want, you know. We work if we can catch them with the left or the right. Whatever one we can catch them with, we hope they're going to come off and take them out. And, Whatever one he catches them with, poof, they go, and there's no return ticket. Yeah, Nigel, welcome back to ITV, I have to say, but are you experienced enough? Are you getting enough experience with all these quick wins? Well, well the thing about it, now, what I'm looking for, really, is, is, is to fight Watson, Graham, and people in Europe. Then, you know, then it can actually put me to the test and say, right, am I ready for world title level yet? And at the moment, being honest with myself, no, I'm not. I mean, I'm not going to say, yeah, I want to go in challenger michael nunn first of all i want to win a british title and then the european but you know it's something that i'm not going to rush everybody wants me sorry to keep going jim but everybody wants me like you know to go and fight for a world title now but you know we're talking about my, my career